Welcome to my channel Chem Science and in this video let's learn the mechanism of electrophilic addition reaction. So in this video we'll be learning about types of mechanism, mechanism steps of electrophilic addition reaction, some examples of this mechanism and at the end we'll be learning about Marconico's rule according to the addition mechanism. So let's see what are the different reaction mechanism. We have two types of reaction mechanism. One is electrophilic and the other is nucleophilic reactions. And in this electrophilic mechanisms, we have electrophilic addition reaction mechanisms and electrophilic substitution reaction mechanisms. Same way, nucleophilic reactions are also addition and substitution kinds, which we will be learning about the mechanism of this reaction in the next videos. But in this video, we will be learning about the electrophilic addition reaction and its mechanism. So, let's start by learning something about electrophilic addition reaction. So, first, let's start by seeing that what is an electrophile. Electrophile is an acceptor of a pair of electrons. So, in one sense, you can say that electrophile should be positively charged so that it can accept the pair of electrons from the other compound. And this is only possible when the molecules have C double bond C which can undergo electrophilic addition reaction because C double bond C has two double bonds and you can also say that there is a good electron cloud or electron density around these double bonds, carbon-carbon double bond and that is the reason that positively charged electrophile can easily react with this C double bond C that is the electron cloud can attract the positively charged electrophile and these reactions are always addition reactions. The reason being is that that one of the bond out of these two double bonds gets broken because of the electrophile positively charged electrophile and the electrophile gets added here on one of the carbon and the other atom gets added to the other carbon. So let's learn this mechanism in detail properly with examples. So let's learn one of the electrophilic reaction with example of addition reaction along with the mechanism also will be seen. Let's start with the simplest example of ethene reaction with the addition of bromine to the ethene. Now we should note here that in this ethene molecule only the C double bond C is going to react and that is the reason that I have drawn the double bonds in the different color than the other bonds of CH which are not going to participate in the reaction. So you can say that only the bonds which are drawn in green light green color will be acting will be the active bonds which will be changing during the reaction and the blue color bonds are not changing during the reaction. So now in this reaction what happens is that the electron density on the C double bond C induces a positive charge on the bromine molecule. Now we can see that both the bromine atoms are equally electronegative. Still the electron density of C double bond C induces a positive charge on one of the bromine atom and hence the other bromine atom gets the partial negative charge and then the electron density we can say that the two electrons which are forming one of the bond of the double bond say one electron of this carbon and the other electron of the other carbon they get broken and forms a bond with bromine so in this way the double bond gets broken and the bromine atom is bonded to the carbon atom. So let's see that what happens in the next step. We can see that the bromine atom gets bonded to one of the carbon. Now in that case what happens is the next carbon gets a positive charge. Reason is that that both the electrons which were forming this bond has been used to form the bond here with the bromine. So the next carbon here is electron deficient and because of that it gets the positive charge and this intermediate is called the positively charged carbocation. 
Now, as the carbon forms a bond with one of the bromine, then the bond which is here between the two bromine atoms moves to the another bromine atom. Because of that, the next bromine has a full negative charge with a lone pair of electron, which can then bond with the other positively charged carbon atom. And so, the whole molecule gets added with two bromine atoms and we can see that the double bond which was earlier has now changed to single bond. So, we can say that the unsaturated molecule has now changed to the saturated molecule by the addition of two bromine atoms to the carbon-carbon double bond to the carbon atoms which had carried the double bond earlier. And we can also note down that the other atoms were totally inert. That shows that these atoms did not participate in the reaction. Only the C double bond C participated in this reaction and the mechanism is only around this C double bond C. So you can once again look at all the steps of this mechanism and then you can try with the other reactions of the alkenes also. We will also be seeing the other reactions. So let's have a look at another type of reaction of alkene with hydrogen bromide or you can say any hydrogen halide atom. We can take an example of hydrogen chloride also here but here we have taken HBr as an example. The reaction mechanism is going to remain the same whether the incoming molecule is bromine molecule or a hydrogen bromide molecule but here in this case we already know that the hydrogen has a partial positive charge and bromine has a partial negative charge as bromine is electronegative. So now again as earlier the C double bond C is going to get attracted to the positively charged hydrogen atom and that's the reason that the double bond gets broken and it bonds the carbon-carbon double bond changes into single bond and one of the carbon gets bonded to hydrogen. Next carbon gets the positive charge because of which we also call it as a carbocation. Now this carbocation attracts the negatively charged bromine atom to it. So the second carbon atom bonds with the bromine atom of the hydrogen bromide. Now here we should note one thing that the curly arrows which we are drawing here are always from negative to positive charge. So here you can see that the electron density is negatively charged. So we draw an arrow from the electron negative part to the partial positive hydrogen atom and in the second step we are drawing the arrow from the negatively charged bromine atom to the positively charged carbon atom. So you should note down one thing that the arrow is always pointing from negative to positively charged species. So here now carbon-carbon double bond is being added with hydrogen bromide. So hydrogen and bromine atoms are added to the double bonds. Let's take another example of ethene reaction again with water molecule. Now in water molecule we know that hydrogen is positively charged and oxygen is partially negative charged. So as usual as we have seen in the earlier reactions, the electron density of C double bond C will get attracted to the positively charged hydrogen atom and that's the reason that it's going to form the bond first with hydrogen atom and next the positively charged carbon atom is going to attract the negatively charged hydroxide ion that is OH minus ions which further gets bonded to the next carbon. And now what we can see here is that C double bond C has definitely changed to the saturated C single bond C but now an alkene has changed to alcohol because what is added to the alkene is the OH group. So now an alkene has changed to alcohol group and so this is one of the important reaction and we have learned this reaction along with the mechanism which is called electrophilic addition mechanism.
the next step which we really need to know which is very important is that suppose if the alkene which we have used here is not as simple as ethene because al ethene here is symmetric we can see that on both sides of the c double bond c the alkene is symmetric and so whichever carbon gets the hydrogen or the hydroxide ion is not going to make difference in the molecule but what if the alkene is unsymmetric if both side of the double bond is not symmetric then where does the positively charged hydrogen ion goes and where should the negatively charged hydroxide ion go let's learn that with the help of marconikos rule now let's first understand what is a marconikos rule that applies only when the alkene is non symmetrical about its double bond now when two different products could result due to this non symmetric alkene when it undergoes a reaction there can be two products out of which one of the product will be the major product and uh, yeah one thing you can note down is that i have a habit of highlighting the important words so i have highlighted the important terms of this rule with yellow color and you can uh, this will help you to remember this rule so you can note down this definition accordingly and specially note down the highlighted words yeah so the major product in this reaction according to the marconikos rule should be that the hydrogen atom gets added to suppose if we have an hydrogen halide then out of hydrogen halide the hydrogen atom is added to the doubly bonded carbon atom in an alkene in which the carbon atom is bearing the greater number of hydrogen atoms now let's understand this with an example but let's see the markovnikov rule, rule once again it says that when an alkene is unsymmetrical about the double bond and two different products could result because of this the major product is the addition of hydrogen atom of the hydrogen halide to the doubly bonded carbon atom in the alkene the carbon which is bearing the greater number of hydrogen atoms let's understand this with the help of an example now here is propene which is unsymmetrical around its c double bond c now we can see that the carbon atom carries a methyl group on one side but the other carbon atom carries only the hydrogen atom so this molecule this alkene is not symmetrical around its c double bond c so now let's see that how does the marconikos rule applies to find out the major product now suppose such an unsymmetrical alkene reacts with hydrogen bromide then as we know that hydrogen carries partial positive charge and bromine carries partial negative charge now let's see that how does the marconikos rule apply here there are two chances and two products formed here is that the hydrogen can go to the ca second carbon atom and it can form a product say suppose this is ch3 c this is the c double bond c here now that gets broken and hydrogen gets bonded here and bromine gets bonded here with the remaining atoms as the hydrogen the second chance is that the ch3 is as such the c double bond c now has a bromine atom here on the second carbon and the first carbon gets the hydrogen atom so there are two chances of the products and both the products will be formed during the reaction but we need to find out that out of these two products which product is going to be the major one and that is according to this rule now as this rule says that the hydrogen atom goes to the doubly bonded carbon carrying the greater number of hydrogen atoms now this is the carbon carrying the greater number of hydrogen atom because it carries two hydrogen while the other car carbon carries only one hydrogen 
so according to this rule this hydrogen should go to the carbon carrying the greater number of hydrogen atoms so with the same mechanism the electron density of carbon carbon double bond gets attracted to the partially positive hydrogen atom and this time the hydrogen gets bonded to the carbon carrying the greater number of hydrogen atom and the next carbon gets the positively charged now let's see that the carbon carrying the positive charge we can say that this carbon is a secondary carbocation why secondary carbocation because the carbon carrying the positive charge is bonded to two other carbon atoms and that is the reason that the secondary carbocation is more stable than the primary carbocation now if the positive charge goes to the first carbon atom then that is going to be the primary carbocation but here secondary carbocation is more stable the reason being is that there are two alkyl groups bonded to the secondary carbocation and that is the reason that as this methyl group are electron donating makes the secondary carbocation stable and because of that the secondary bromide will be more stable than the bromine atom going to the pri primary carbocation so this stable carbocation secondary stable carbocation gets bonded to the negatively charged bromine atom and this results in the secondary product that is you can say that secondary haloalkane is formed here in this reaction so in this video we have learned about the electrophilic addition reaction mechanism along with the marconikov's rules and many other examples if you have liked this video and yet not subscribed the channel then do subscribe it